745, there's uh, 87 George Street. Uh, uh, housed within that building is our studios. And joining us this morning, uh, Paul Saluski and Brian Doyle. Doyle Saluski, coping with debt segment. How are you, fellas? Good. Good morning. Good morning. We're going to talk uh, about uh, garnishment of wages today. Okay. What exactly does that mean for those who don't know? Well, well, it's when somebody is faced with a judgment, a creditor is pursuing an individual for payment of a debt. Right. And then they get an execution, and then it's a judgment, and they seize the wages. They notify the person's employer, and the employer then has to pay a portion of that wage to the creditor over a period of time till that judgment is satisfied. Right. right. And that's done through employers and... Yeah, well, it's just done it's all through a matter of cooperation that way. Well, no, a creditor sends a legal notice to the employer to say, really? pay, You've got to and pay you this. must pay. Yeah. You must right. pay. And, of course, employers really don't like that because it messes up their payroll system. Right, right. It's an extra step in and the it's, payroll it's, process. It's, it's so far down the line from where we like to see clients go. I mean, if they've hit the point where there's a garnishment, they've gone way too far. They should have gone for professional. What does that mean that, that in, in, in uh, everyday terms, like you've obviously reached a point where people are coming after you for money? You've not paid your debts, and they've they, they want to get paid. They've want they've taken you to court. You've lost the court battle, so it's not it's not just a thing that just happened. It's been a process. Right. And you've done nothing about it. So yeah, yeah, we like people to come to see us before the calls even start. But here the calls have started. The legal action is incurred, a judgment's been uh, been achieved, and a garnishment's been executed. Right. And the amount of money they can take varies depending upon the situation. Uh, typically, a small claims or a regular garnishment is like 20%. Family law things, you haven't been paying maintenance payments or support payments, is 50%. And good old CRA can take as much as they want to from you. Really? And they don't need a special order to do it. No, they can just go ahead and do yeah, it. That's right. Yeah. So we have the power, Kurt, to file a proposal, for example, and halt that process and uh, put a lid on it until some resolution is, is, uh, is uh, achieved to be able to uh, allow a reasonable payment over a reasonable period of time Right. for all creditors, not right. just the judgment creditor. Right, and that doesn't necessarily mean uh, you're in bankruptcy or anything like no. that. You're just paying back. That's right. It's a deal. Creditors, you've, done, right? you've done a deal. You've done right. a deal. Right. I wanted to, uh, while you guys were here, we talk, uh, you know, oftentimes a lot when it comes to housing and so on about interest rates. But interest rates are a far-reaching sort of phenomenon that uh, affects a lot of people in many different ways. What's your take on, uh, on uh, you know, people talking about interest rates are too low and they should be brought up and that sort of thing? And we, we were just talking earlier that, uh, you know, uh, and if it came out last week, but something you guys have known for a while, that we're carrying the most debt ever here in this country as, as individuals, right? That's right. What do you make of interest rates? What's your take on that? Well, personally, I don't believe that interest rates can rise because of the effect it'll have on the U.S. debt. It'll become too burdensome for the U.S. to carry. But then uh, if you look at the at individual balance sheets these days with Canadians carrying more debt than ever before as a percentage of disposable income, Canadians can't afford interest rates to rise either. Right. Is it, is it interest rates then are, that are leading to trouble for a lot of people? Well, sure, because you've got lower mortgage payments to make. You, you have more money, disposable income in theory. You go and spend that, then you borrow to spend more and spend more and spend more. So you're paying back at lower rates for a lot of what you're buying. Would you rather see interest rates up a little bit to prevent that from happening, or would it still happen? I suspect that there will be a little bit of a scare that the powers that be, uh, Mr. Flaherty, might nudge our interest rates up a little bit, but I can't see a major no. increase because that would be devastating to our economy. Because you were saying the world economy is now based on low interest rates, That's correct? Right. That's right. Yeah. And for a lot of people, you know, half a percent, three quarters of a percent would be enough to really hurt them. Yeah. In many cases, uh, you're paying a lot for interest rates uh, on your credit cards and so on. These guys can help you out with that stuff before you get to the garnishment stage, as Brian mentioned. So uh, give Doyle Saluski a call. Uh, visit their website, uh, take action, and you'll be in much better shape after you do. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Good to Our see pleasure. you. Take care.